Hi, I'm Pat Kelly. Okay, we're getting into good stuff now. We're looking at the application of those vector valued functions that we were working with last lesson. And one of the applications that we're looking at here is a bit of a physics concept. If they give us a position vector, they want us to find the velocity vector and the acceleration vector. And while we're at it, they also ask us to find the speed. All right, so uh, in terms of the mathematics here, what you really have to know is how those different quantities relate to each other. For instance, if they're giving us this position vector, first thing they ask for is the velocity vector. I'll write V of t. And the relationship that I'm talking about, it's so much up your alley, it's calculus, it's differentiation. R prime of t. Which means then we're going to get our answer by just going ahead and differentiating that R of t vector valued function. You've done enough of these, you know you're just differentiating each component. So I'm going to get a 2t comma 1 as a vector. That's exactly what they mean by the velocity vector. That's what they wanted. Okay. And while I'm at it, I mean with this velocity vector written in front of me, I'm going to go ahead and find the speed. And the relationship there is the speed is the magnitude of your velocity vector. And that's one of our vector value function concepts of magnitude, which always just equals the square root. And then you square the components from the vector that you're trying to find the magnitude of and add them up in between. So I'm going to square this and get 4t squared and add up the square of the second component, which is just 1. It's all under the radical hat. And this is the speed that they asked for. Okay. And they also asked us to find acceleration as a vector. And that gets back to our relationships that you have to know. And the relationship here, again, more good calculus. The relationship is that if I want the acceleration vector, it equals the derivative of the velocity vector. Okay. So I'm just looking up at my velocity vector and differentiating. So I'm getting a 2 comma 0. And as a vector, that would be my answer for acceleration. Okay, they pushed us a little bit further in this problem, just in the sense that they gave us this value of t, t equals 2, and they want us to evaluate some of these. They were actu actually really only specified the velocity and the acceleration, but I am going to throw one more in there. I'm going to find the original function, the position, at that value of 2, so r of 2 which you can see what we're doing is just plugging in here and we get 4 comma 2 as a vector. And now back to what they wanted with my velocity. They asked for the velocity at that value of 2. So I'm plugging in here, right? So 4 comma 1 as a vector. And then finally they did ask for the acceleration evaluated at that same value of 2. Now, this is the easiest one yet, because when you go to plug a 2 in for t there, there is no t, so it's just 2 comma 0. All right, and then finally, and this is really the best part, is try to see how all those things are connected by graphing. So let's start with a graph of actually even the original function that they give us, that r of t. And you've done problems like this before where they've given you a vector valued function. You have to see what it looks like in a good old fashioned x, y plane. So in this case, what I do is, uh, well, what you always do is look for relationships between your components and express them in terms of x and y. This one's easy because that second component is just the single lone little t. So to sketch r of t, what I'll notice is that y equals t, right? Second component is just t, so y equals t. And that gives me a real quick connection. If I look at the x coordinate, or the first component, x equals y squared, because x equals t squared, but y is t. The reason I get excited about that is because that's a very familiar graph. x equals y squared, that's your sideways parabola. So now I can draw that original position function that they gave us as a sideways parabola. Let's see if I can be somewhat accurate here with uh, right there. 
there, I'd have one, one, and something like that. Does not have to be perfect, but the better I can draw mine, the better you'll see those connections between these other guys that we're about to include in the graph. Here we go. They didn't ask for this, but I told you I wanted to do it anyway. This uh, R of 2, 4, comma 2, that just tells me where I'm at on this graph. 4, comma 2, that'd be right there. Technically as a vector, but all I'm really interested in is that point on the curve. Because from there then, I'm going to draw my vector, sorry, my velocity vector, which is 4, comma 1. Switch to blue. And I needed this point because when you go to draw this velocity vector, you want its initial point to be right there where you're, on, where you're at on the graph, the terminal point of that guy, 4, comma 2. So from up here, that pink dot, I'm looking to go 4 to the right and then up 1. So roughly over, up 1, uh, let's say it's right about there. Now this is why I was trying to be so somewhat neat. So I was trying to be somewhat neat is that blue vector that represents velocity should look tangent to the parabola. We know this stuff. It's the derivative of the original should give you, give you tangent lines. All right. Another aspect of this that we'll see, though, is if we go ahead and graph that acceleration vector. Okay, so 2 comma 0, and I want to draw that also from this pink dot. So from this pink dot, I'm just trying to draw 2 to the right and 0 up, so right about there. Doesn't have to be perfect, but what you're trying to visualize, even from a physics standpoint, is that as that particle's traveling along this dot, its velocity wants to send it off onto a tangent, whereas its acceleration is actually always pulling straight to the right. That's why this is always 2 comma 0. Okay? All right. Hopefully that helps you with the other problems. Thanks.